Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, video number 10 in the How to Build and Execute Your Hypertrophy Mesocycle video series. There's 12 videos total, so getting to the end of things here. Today we're going to talk about individualizing volume. I'm going to tell you all about how that works, and I'm going to try to show you how it works with the new RP Hypertrophy app, which is for sale. The link is right in the description below. It's the top link. And by the way, if you like it for a month, Think about getting it for the year for two good reasons. One, it actually saves you 30% money, which is like a lot of savings. Definitely consider that. The other is it gets me a lot of money. And um, I, I like money. Don't you like money? It Wouldn't it be nice if I got wealthy? You could look from your not so wealthy home up to my home on the hill and you could see my unicorns practicing for synchronized unicorn dancing, which is what I'm going to get into when I'm a trillionaire. In any case, volume adjustment. Here we go. In the hypertrophy app, and without it if you want to do this stuff in your head and be a proper scientist, so to speak, the algorithm that determines your volume that it recommends, and by recommends, I mean it just physically gives you fewer or more sets every single time that you train, is complicated because at least three factors go into it. The first factor is how pumped you're getting. If you're getting really crappy pumps that are barely there, it'll probably want to raise your volume. If you're getting amazing pumps, it probably doesn't want to give you any more volume because you're checking the green box, you're winning. The next one is soreness. If you don't get sore at all, that's probably okay, as long as you're getting good pumps and good progression. But if you're not getting great pumps and everything else is meh, if you're not getting sore at all, trying to do more volume is probably a good direction towards more growth. But if you're getting really sore, especially super ultra sore, you don't want to do any more volume and maybe even a little bit less because it's too much damage and it's overkill. But there's a third factor there what your own perception is of your fatigue and recovery status for sustainability purposes. And sustainably is the only way we grow muscle enough of it in the long term. You got to keep coming back week on week. If you are doing an amount of volume, let's say 10 by 10 in the squat, if you're really haven't thought things through, if you're doing an amount of volume that overwhelms you, you feel psychologically and physically under-recovered. Yeah, the pumps are whatever, the soreness is whatever, you're just drained. You can't keep doing that to yourself. The point at which you should feel completely drained or overwhelmed is the last week of every single mesocycle before the deload. All the weeks up to that should be much more manageable. So you shouldn't have a volume that is overwhelming to you. It is not ideal or sustainable physiologically and very importantly, psychologically. The like, you guys ever looked at your plan and you're like, I have six sets of upright rows. I'm going to kill myself or just leave the gym and never do an upright row ever again. And if you do a lot of sets, if you have a ton of sets, like way too many for how much your volume tolerance is, for how much your workload tolerance is, you can get through them, but you you sort of, uh, there's a fatal conceit there, is that you are just getting through them. You're like, I'm going up right row, 15, 16, 17, rack, fuck, got to hear two minutes later. Maybe if you had three or four sets of upright rows and not six, you could focus like a fucking cyborg on those three or four sets and just fucking grind them out. Perfect eccentric control, everything, because you're not overwhelmed by the amount of volume you have to do. And then you could really do a high quality job with those three or four sets and get your best combination of growth and fatigue. Because you could get a little bit more growth from doing six sets not so well than four sets really well. But the fatigue that comes along for the ride is so high, it's just going to burn you out in a few weeks anyway, and you're not going to get a lot of long-term gains. So, Pump and soreness, we already asked about those and talked about them in video number eight. The app's handling all that already. But there is another question for workload that the app will ask you independently. Let's look at this in the hypertrophy mesocycle that we made earlier. So we're going to check this in and it's going to say, it's going to ask about joint pain and chest soreness. Let's say we got low pain and got a little sore. Okay, great. And then just so happens that at the end of the workload for a specific muscle group. Every exercise that goes in that muscle group, which this bench press camera bar uh, downset is the last in this example. What we're going to have here is once we check in and do as many reps, it's going to ask us joint pain again because it's a different load. So if you switch the load, sometimes heavier loads cause more joint pain to lighter loads. The app will keep track of that, which is really neat. Say, well, it didn't get any joint pain here. The chest pump was actually really good, moderate and not amazing. Now the chest workload question comes up. 
I will put a fine point on this. This is where honesty to yourself is the only, only, only thing that matters. Let's take a look at how and why. So it says chest workload. How would you rate the difficulty of the work you did for your chest? All of the sets combined, how do you feel? Was it easy? Because look, look, to be honest, our program currently is two sets of chest. You'd be like, boom, boom, done. Like, this is the easiest thing in the world. Of course you'd click easy. That's obvious. Next one is pretty good. And, and th this one, I would say like, it's something you can keep doing week after week after week. In week one, ideally, everything should be easy. In weeks two, three, four, et cetera, except for that last week, you should probably be clicking pretty good. If you're not, click easy or click push my limits and the app will help raise or lower your volume to get you, it's kind of trying to get you into a pretty good state most of the time. If pushed your limits is what you select, here's how you feel about it, right? Pushed your limits means this, and it means exactly this. Let's say you had seven total sets for chest. After set seven, when you rack the shit, if your buddy turns to you, who does not have the RPI hypertrophy app, you say, yeah, man, I'm feeling it. You want to do another set? You're like, bro, that last set, dot, 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 pushed my limits. I don't think any more is a good idea. It really, really, the next set is going to be junk volume for me. The next set, I'm just going to be like, ah, I'm still here, I think. Pushed your limits means it was great stimulus. It wasn't too much, but damn, it's getting close to that fine line. It's the same thing could be true with like eating. You know, you have like a huge burrito at like the great Mexican place down the street. And someone's like, are you full? You're like, bro, I'm not too full. I'm not hurting. But if I have another chip, another corn chip and throw it in my mouth, another tortilla chip, that'll be that. I'll be way overboard. So push my limits is just, I don't want to do any more. And here's a little insider trick. If you click pushed my limits, on any of your muscle groups in the app, in any given session, the next time that session comes up again next week, it won't increase your sets no matter what you rate for pump or soreness or anything else. It won't increase them anymore. Push my limits is a hard stop to no more. Seven sets, that's it. Next week, also seven. Even if you, the pump and soreness and all this other stuff said, hey, like you could do eight sets, it won't go to eight. So if the app is overdoing the volume for you, that means you are not being honest enough with your workload rating. So the workload rating is your chance. It's your second to last chance to really decide, do I want to do less volume, the same amount of volume or more volume? And if you're like, look, I don't want to do any more volume. I feel like it won't be sustainable for me. Just say, push my limits. You are not admitting that your ego is weak. We don't expect you to be able to do more. It's nonsense. Let all that stuff just float right the fuck out of your head. Again, man, I want to push, I want to press push my limits, but it was only four sets of leg press. Like, okay, okay, let me do the logic for you. That means you're a bad person. That means someone who's better than you in every single way, who should be married to the wife you're married to instead, and she just found your dumb ass, he could do five sets of leg press. Is that what you think the world has come to? No. If it pushed your limits, it pushed your limits, that's it. Now, if you're like, I'm just being a wuss, well, fucking don't push, push my limits. If you really think like, oh, I can do more, I should do more, hey, hell yeah, say pretty good or easy. But if it really is pushing your limits, don't do any more because quality always comes before quantity. So be honest. And of course, if it's too much, because sometimes you like nine sets of legs, you really can't walk after set six. Set six was officially your push your limits set and you did three more. And like, look, you got too ahead of yourself. You got excited. You programmed all these sets. Put in too much. If it's accurate, then the app will reduce how much work you do next week. I said earlier, second to last chance. I'll show you what the last chance looks like. And last chance is repeating for always. So let's say pretty good. We say, okay, great. If we want, let's say we go down to Barbell Metro and it's programmed two sets for us. And we know like, yeah, last week I did choose what I chose. And it, it is, I understand it has capped me at two sets because of what I chose, but like I was stressed. I felt like what was too much. It was because my girlfriend was breaking up with me and she physically used my dog's body to hit me with. It was real nasty argument. I can do more this week. You just go right up here and you add a set. No problem. Or if you have three sets and you're like, man, I know I rated what I rated, but two sets is going to cook my ass. You go over here and you remove a set and you can do it anytime you want. So as a recap, 
The soreness and pump stuff, the app handles for you. Be honest with that. The workload stuff, be really honest with that because it's the second to last time, really as a programmatic feed forward thing, it's the last chance you get to tell the app, hey, uh, I do want more sets if you think it's good on other grounds or no, I definitely don't want any more sets. The push my limits thing is a huge thing to use for time saving. If you've used our templates before and you rate accurately and you can hypothetically do more, they'll just keep giving you more volume and you're like, fucking God, why? <laughs> this is crazy. I don't want this. And then people were saying, dude, look, I, I like you guys. RP is great, but I'm doing two hour workouts. I don't have time for two hour workouts. I want an hour and that's it. With this app, you build your workout. You get to choose when you build it exactly how many sets you're going to do. First week, you can edit all the sets yourself. Condense it down to something that takes you 45 minutes with a little bit of room for adding a few sets here and there. But when you don't want any more sets, you're like, my workout takes me an hour. Next week, it's going to also take me an hour. I don't want to take any more because I only have an hour. Great. Just rate pushed your limits on everything. It's not judging you under the hood. It's not calling you a little bitch. Don't worry about any of that stuff. It's just going to say, hey, this is the most this person wants to do set-wise. It still progresses you on load. It still progresses you on reps. You will still get phenomenal results. If you just say push my limits, it'll never add another set to that m m muscle group or that exercise ever again for the entire rest of the mesocycle as long as you keep hitting push my limits. If you are strapped for time and if you want a workout that's quick, make a quick workout, rate everything as push limits, rate all the soreness and pump and stuff accurately, and it will not increase your sets any more than you want it to. And last chance is like if you want another set here and there, you can always add it manually. And then next week, it'll go, okay, you did two sets the week before. This week, you did three. Next week, I'm going to assume you want to do three again, unless you want to delete it and go from there. So the app here is really just infinitely customizable to exactly what you want, but it also thinks under the hood. It's like an expert system that says, hey, like, uh, this is what I came up for you is probably the best idea. Based on your rating, it has better ideas, but at the end of the day, you are the arbiter. You can always choose the reps, load, weight. You can always modify them. The app is value-free. It doesn't judge you. But secretly, there's this algorithm that judges you morally, and it, actually, the, the app collects your data stream off of your apps like YouTube, and it judges the shit out of what videos you're watching. Hentai, it'll judge you on that. In any case, judge you positively, of course, a man of culture. I've said enough, possibly too much. Link in the description to buy the thing. Buy it. I get more Lamborghinis. We'll see you guys next time, next Tuesday, for the next video in the series. Peace, homies.